Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you guys have been enjoying the Dragon Quest content. If you have been, or you just like JRPG content, please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel out. My goal is to get to 5,000 subscribers this year. I hope it can be done. I don't know if it can, but uh, we're going to do our best. Thank you guys for all your love and support lately. It's been fantastic. So I wanted to do a video talking about... What we all learned from the 45 minutes of new Japanese exclusive Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake gameplay. I had a video go up uh, yesterday or the day before showing all 45 minutes of the new gameplay. If you haven't checked that out and you want to, check it out. If you don't want to, I gotcha. That's why we're making this one. So if you don't got 45 minutes of time, I am going to go through kind of everything we learned in that, uh, in that gameplay footage. So, starting off with, uh, towns have the original layouts, but are spread out a bit to allow them to feel more realistic and lived in. So, I've been tinkering around in Dragon Warrior on the NES lately, and the towns actually do match up quite well. But what they did, they basically blew everything up in this HD 2D remake, and, uh, fleshed it out a little bit, made the towns feel more alive and vibrant, and, uh... It explains why we have the dash feature. So that's the other thing. There's a dash feature allowing you to move around quicker. You can also toggle it so that your default movement is dashing. So it helps you get around from uh, place to place a little bit quicker. Like I said, the towns are a little bit bigger than they were on the NES. So this helps you get around a lot quicker. You now save at churches and not the king. I think we already knew that coming into this, but I just want to reiterate. And it showed them uh, saving at the at the church there instead of saving at the king, which is nice. I mean, there's going to be more opportunities to save our game in the in the game, and you're not going to have to go back to Aliahan or which or uh, I think Romali. You could also save at. You won't have to be going back to those places to save at the king anymore. You can go to pretty much... I, I don't want to say all towns, because obviously there's going to be some towns without churches. But uh, you can go to most towns and just save at the church there. And you don't have to worry about zo always having to zoom to the, the, the one or two main hubs. Another thing I noticed right off the bat, as soon as we left town pretty much was that there are way more monsters per encounter. They did say that this results in quicker EXP and gold gained, which is great because the other thing we learned is that the gear and items and stuff like that, uh, weapons, items, gear, are a little bit more expensive than they were in previous versions. So this is kind of the way that they're balancing that out is with the amount of gold and EXP you gain. Uh, because you're fighting a crap load more monsters. You're fighting six monsters per encounter almost, it looks like, so. Speaking of battles, there are three different battle speeds that can be toggled at any time. I don't know, this might be something we already knew, but they actually went in and showed it. You can, there's, there's like, I think slow is like the standard, and then there's a little bit sped up, and then there's double speed. I think Dragon Quest Monsters 3 The Dark Prince had the three settings as well. It's nice if you, if you want to breeze through your grind, uh, you can just crank that speed right up. So that's fantastic. Or if you want to take your time and enjoy the view, play it on uh, normal speed or slow or whatever, whatever it's going to be called. You can change how far the camera is zoomed in. So that's either on the world map or in towns or anything like that. You can change how far the camera is zoomed in, so you can zoom in a little bit closer on your on your party members uh, while you're walking around, get a little bit more details on the environment, or you can zoom out a little bit if you're say in a cavern or something like that, and you want to see all your all the different options available to you. Just gives you a little bit, uh, couple different perspectives, which is nice. You don't really ever see that in uh, in 2D sprite-based games. Enemy monsters each make a different sound when you defeat them. So this hopefully wasn't just my wonky ass translating. I My Japanese skills are not the greatest, but it seemed like it said that all the different monsters when you defeat them make a different sound when you defeat them. So I did notice that they did sound different. So I don't know if it's every single monster in the game makes a different sound when you defeat them, but uh, I believe that they make a different sound when you defeat them. And it seemed that way. It also seems like every time you go into an area that might have something new in it, or you're in a new area, or you discover something new, or there's something you need to know, they do offer a tutorial 
every time you encounter something new. So, so it, just a quick tutorial page when you get somewhere new or you can do something new. So, for those of, for for anyone that's new to the series or something new implemented in the game, in this game in particular, uh, you'll know how to you'll know how to do it. Personalities are here, and you can get the Tomboy personality book very early on. I think it was on the bookshelf next to the uh, the old man. I think it was there in the original as well. Well, not the original, but in the uh, Super Famicom remakes as well. Don't quote me on that. It's been a very long time since I've played through Dragon Quest III. One big thing I noticed on the world map was the huge difference in elevation when you're walking in mountainous areas. So ever since Dragon Quest 1 on the NES, or Dragon Warrior 1 on the NES, there's always been like hills you could walk over, or like mountains, like now they're like really big hills and, and mountains and stuff. So it's kind of cool actually how much elevation there was. I was not expecting that. The lighting in this game is absolutely spectacular. The way its reflection sparkles off the water, the way everything looks so lush in the daytime and absolutely gorgeous at sunset. You can even see beams of light from the sunset protruding down between the pillars when in lower, more enclosed areas. It just looks phenomenal. I think they did an excellent job with the lighting. Speaking of light or lighting, the hero carries a lantern to light his way at night. I thought that was kind of neat. One thing I'm a little iffy on is that you can zoom from inside buildings and dungeons and stuff and you're not going to bonk your head. That is something I honestly prefer to have. I think it's uh, hilarious and it's a quirk of the series and I feel like kind of phasing it out is a little bit sad because new players are going to miss out on that stuff. If that's something that never comes back to the series, it's something new players and even old players alike will potentially never experience again and it was just like an awesome long-running kind of inside Dragon Quest fan joke. It also gets rid of the need to have the evac spell but one positive thing about the zoom spell and chimera wings is that you can now zoom to caves, towers, or any dungeons you've been to before. You're able to toggle the difficulty settings at any time, and you receive less EXP and gold on Draconian Quest or the harder difficulty. The Easy Mode or Draki Quest is designed for newcomers who may not have ever played a JRPG before, so they can fully experience and enjoy all that the game has to offer without any trouble. So that's fantastic too. Make the game super accessible, so any newcomers, if they have never played a JRPG before, or you've got young kids playing the game, or people who just don't have a lot of time, you can get through the game, experience all the game has to offer, enjoy the fantastic story and world and characters, and uh, you're never, you're never going to have to worry about struggling too much. Important story or quest characters have an icon over their heads. So if you go into a town or a building or something like that, somebody has like a little diamond shaped exclamation point over their head, you can go over to them, you know that that's what your next objective is, you don't have to waste time talking to absolutely everyone. I recommend talking to everyone anyways because this is a Dragon Quest game, that is where they are the best and strongest, is just like getting to know their citizens and NPCs and all that stuff. But if you're in a hurry, or at least if you don't know what to do next, now it's easy to figure out what to do next. So that helps a lot, especially uh, with people who aren't used to old school NES era JRPGs. You can get items like the boomerang much earlier. I'm glad that the boomerang is in the game and it's nice you get it in the, the tower. Maybe it was just for this trial, but it seems like it's going to be there. Unfortunately, the boomerang was a Pachisi or Sugoroku exclusive item in the Super Famicom and Game Boy Color remakes, which makes me even more concerned that Pachisi may not be in the game. So I'm still pretty nervous about Pachisi not being in the game because I absolutely love Sugoroku or Pachisi or Treasures and Trapdoors, whatever you want to call it. It's my favorite minigame of all time. I would love for it to be in here. Each region has its own map, design, and feel, giving you more of a sense of exploration when reaching new areas. So they're wanting to make it really feel like you're going from like country to country and how everything's going to be a little bit different depending on what region you are. So it really will have that like sense of exploration, that world tour feel. And I, that's one of the things I love most about Dragon Quest. So it's going to be really cool to... Uh, Experience that to a higher level in in uh, this remake. Autosave is treated as a separate save file, which is really nice, and the game autosaves whenever you exit and enter dungeons, as well as after battles. The final thing that we noticed, and this was a lot of people have been commenting on my videos this, so it's not 100% set in stone, but I would say it's like 90% set in stone. It appears as if the damage numbers turn red if you're attacking an enemy with something they're weak against. 
Uh, so, like, the Ravens seemed weak against Woosh, and the Slimes were weak against, like, the Frizz or the Sizz spell there. So, that's kind of cool. So, there's going to be an actual indicator if the element or the weapon type or something like that is super effective against the monsters you're attacking. So, now you can find out, okay, Ravens are weak against Woosh spells or Wind spells. So, you want to use your Wind spells on, like, the bird monsters and stuff like that. Slimes seem like they're weak against Fire spells, so... That's kind of cool. Uh, Dragon Quest, that's been one area they've always been pretty wonky with, especially in the earlier games, so I'm glad that they really fixed that in this one. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I tried to uh, keep it as short as possible to sum up what we learned from the 45 minutes of Japanese-exclusive gameplay. If you guys enjoyed this content, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all, share this around so others can uh, get an idea of what this game is going to have to offer. And of course, if you want to hang out with me live, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday nights, we've been playing Fallout 3, my first ever playthrough. Not a big Western RPG guy, but I've been uh, enjoying it for the most part. And then Saturday mornings are Dragon Quest 10 days, and Sunday nights, we've been playing on co-op streams. So a lot of arcade beat-em-ups and stuff like that. Sometimes we play Far Cry. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.